when you come to a lab like our uh, lab here at UBC, you will immediately realize that there is a large amount of investment that, of course, has come from many of the uh, funding agencies that we have here in Canada. Uh, one of them, and uh, one that which has really contributed a lot to this effort, has been answer over the last uh, eight years, in my particular case. And if I really have to look at where ANSIG has made the major contribution, of course, I can say we, 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 you know, we've been supported as far as equipment is concerned, but I really think that the uh, biggest uh, emphasis should go to the investment ANSIG has made in personnel. And when I say personnel, I really mean young people. Young people, like students and postdoc and researchers, that of course produce the science and then everybody can see from outside, and it, which is what we are striving for, but of course are also uh, the people that we want to train for uh, you know, future jobs and future science that will, uh, will be carried out. And so again, I think that the biggest impact in, in my research experience, in my training experience from ANSWER has really been investing in young people and in their dreams. The effort of my group and my, my own uh, uh, effort in research in the last eight years at UBC has been twofold. On the one hand, we are really striving for uh, the creation of a new concept, the creation of new materials, and the understanding of those materials. And when I say new materials, I refer to a system that we call quantum materials, which are, whose properties are dominated by, by the quantum mechanical interactions between, for instance, the charge of an electron and the spin of an electron. Uh, as an example of quantum materials, probably the best known is that of high temperature superconductors or in other cases some unconventional magnets. These are used for instance in MRI machines that in you know, uh, hospitals and everyday life people can see. Uh, for instance, one could imagine of using this system for lossless power lines. Well, these materials are materials that not only are very interesting for potential application, but really they do defy our traditional understanding. And that's where new science, new concepts, and new intuition come about and have to be created. So that's one effort. The other part of the effort, of course, is to develop the tools that we use to do study. And in particular, in our case, we're looking at electrons, electrons moving inside a solid, and what we want to do is, is to go and measure the direction of motion, measure their velocity, measure their spins, all of the quantum mechanical properties. And so together with UBC and the Canadian Light Source, we have created first a quantum material laboratory here at UBC, and now we're working towards the next big thing in our case is the creation of a quantum material spectroscopy center at the Canadian Light Source. This will be a, a beamline facility uh, at a national level that will be used for the study and creation on, of NOVA quantum materials. Well, let me, let me say that I consider uh, a great impact coming from this work also one of the aspects that fascinated me the most, which is really the progress we, we are making at the intellectual level when we study these kind of problems, new problems, and we develop new intuition and understanding. Uh, of course, though, there is also a very applied aspect to this research effort, and, uh, and that perhaps can be best exemplified by the case of high temperature superconductors, which have already been used in uh, important applications like MRI machines in hospitals or for power uh, production and, tran and transport uh, without dissipation. When, uh, when we go and, uh, and say what would be the impact of our work is, is actually really difficult to predict. It's a bit like uh, going back and thinking of the uh, development of semiconductors and not superconductors but semiconductors in the 50 and the revolution that came with it for instance with the development of computers which are now distributed all over the world. Uh, the same could be point could be addressed also by thinking of what Andre Gein uh, said this year when he was awarded the Nobel Prize and he was asked uh, what would be the importance of graphene, the single layer of carbon atoms that Andre Gein and collaborator discovered. And he actually very simply and very frankly said, well, it would be like asking a uh, man of the last century what would be you know, the possible use of plastic, the moment that was just invented. Uh, if we now 
think of, of, of the work we are doing at UBC, and not only my group, but a, you know, a more enlarging the uh, Quantum Matter Institute we just created at UBC with all the people who are working in, uh, in, uh, in this field of uh, novel magnets, novel superconductors, and novel electronic materials, I would say, uh, and of course not only at UBC in Vancouver, but in, all over Canada, I would say that Canada is really well positioned to uh, keep investing in this direction, hoping for a uh, real application, a real benefit to everyday life uh, for uh, Canada as a whole. The other aspect I'd like to emphasize here is of course the impact that will come from the availability of facilities like the one we are now building, the Canadian Light Source. This will be a reference for future studies, academic studies, as well as uh, industrial studies in, uh, in the future direction of interest, economical interest. So certainly they're uh, another source of big impact. And probably one that I always like to remind, and to me is a very personal, important drive, is the impact we have with our work at the educational level. And again, that of uh, training and satisfying the desire of young people that will become the researchers of tomorrow. Okay,